I'm Shan, this is Shani Reads and I'm going to talk about the books I read in the second half of August and there is a book I read in the first half of August which I will link if you're interested. Um, I will just start. So there was Hot Stopper Volume 1 and 2 by Alice Oseman which um, Charlotte from Tired Mama tries to read lent me because she really loved them and um, they are described in the back as boy meets boy, boy beco boys become friends, boys fall in love. That's That's all you need to know. Um, the graphic novels, I really like the drawings, they are really cute, I did really enjoy them, they're kind of, yeah, they are charming, yay. I've got two books here which actually plot wise are really similar, so there's um, Your Turn to Die by Sue Woolman and Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson, both of them have past crimes and then present crimes which kind of interlink in a way. This one was really good. This one was kind of trash. I will start with this one. Um, yeah, so there's a, it's about this kind of group of friends and their parents who all go to stay in this big house every year. And then this year that they grow there, there's been this um, body discovered in the uh, grounds and it's about trying to work out what that was about. Um, I went in thinking that we were just, um, trying to solve that crime I didn't realize there was a present day thing going on for a long time so when there was like a bit of a twist I, it's not really a twist but when there was a bit of a reveal of something um I was quite surprised by it because I wasn't really expecting that that's where we were going whereas when I looked at reviews everyone was like oh I could see that coming a mile off but I missed that whole I just didn't twig that 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 side of the thing was happening anyway um yeah it wasn't great but it was enjoyable enough uh, to read in a kind of day um, but this one I thought was really fun. I really like Maureen John Johnson's writing anyway. And this one was just kind of much, just much more accomplished. And it had much more kind of interesting sort of stuff thrown in as well. So the main character is, um, wants to be a detective and she's really into like uh, kind of classic detective novels. She loves Sherlock Holmes and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so she goes to this school in Vermont where they have, where there's been this um, crime committed or the murder committed like years and years ago that no one has been able to solve. And she is trying to solve it and then there's also a present day crime that she is trying to solve as well alongside all of this she has um anxiety and um there's the bits about the anxiety i thought were really good as well so there's stuff when stuff happens um she has a bit of an anxiety attack and that just made sense because i kind of feel that you, you probably should if you're discovering that some of the stuff that she's discovering so um the characters just felt way more real in this one than they did in this one the writing was better i shouldn't compare the writing was better they're just yeah it's really good um there's a second one i don't know if that's all but the second one's out um and i've ordered it from the library and i'm just waiting for it to come in and i also finished pleasure activism the politics of feeling good written and gathered by adrian marie brown which i was reading with mercedes and with charlotte and this is a collection of essays which are all kind of meant to be linked up to this idea of pleasure activism um, that was the bit really that didn't quite work for me as I felt that they didn't necessarily all link and maybe it was sort of the wrong title or the wrong idea because you know the essays are all really interesting but they didn't really didn't all necessarily fit in with this pleasure activism and really even after reading the whole thing I'm not really I was never 100% what pleasure activism was um, I mean it says the politics are feeling good I guess I know what that means but I didn't yeah because even the essay that they're talking about as their kind of crux of the whole thing or their inspiration for this pleasure activism, which is The Uses of the Erotic by Audre Lorde, I didn't quite understand that either in terms of um, what Audre Lorde saw as the erotic, because I felt like what I thought was the erotic wasn't necessarily what she thought was. So I, you know, I know it's all just kind of words really, but um, yeah, those things didn't quite work. But if you're just reading like... I feel it didn't necessarily work as a book just to read, you know, page after page after page. It probably would have been best just to read the odd essay now and again and really take it slowly. Um, yes, there's some great writers in it, though, and it's really diverse um, writers and really kind of inclusive language. And I really appreciated all of that. And then the last one I wanted to talk to you about is this one, which is The World Comes to You, Notes on Practice, Love and Social Action by Michael Stone. Um, this is just a little book which has just kind of like short essays or short teachings 
and um, the introduction by his wife Karina. Um, I think his wife is called Karina, as I said that. Was it Corina? Karina. <laughs> so the um, introduction by his wife talks about how you can just, you know, it's a book you could keep with you, you could just read a bit now and again, you could just dip into it, you can just, yeah, have it with you and read a little bit if you're feeling a little bit, you know, that you need a little bit of support. So I really loved it. Um, I feel if you haven't read any Michael Stone, this is actually quite a nice place to start because it's really accessible and because they're kind of quick and, um, yeah, they're lovely and just so you have an idea, there's a little bit here that says, um, the reason we deepen formal practice of meditation, pranayama, asana, or whatever it is for you, is so that we can really work with the emotional states and turbulent thoughts that make us suffer. So inside there's something real going on that you can use then use to affect change in the world around you. So you can be one with the cancer, your prison cell, your depression. That's yoga in the biggest, most intimate sense. Yoga just means not trying to be one with something other than what's right here. It's being fully yoked to your life and the openings you offer to yourself become a new sensitivity and tenderness as you open to the suffering of others. So yes, I, I really liked it. Um, I mean, I've, I know that I've kind of mentioned him quite a bit before and I don't know if any of you have read him or any of you know really about him, but um, he was a international quite famous yoga teacher and Buddhist, um, kind of brought Buddhist teachings into his work as well. I think he was a psychotherapist too. Yeah, um, it, it, there's lots of videos that he's done on, on YouTube, which are really great. I'm doing a course, an online course that he put together, um, which I'm really finding helpful as well. Um, I guess what's kind of hard about Michael Stone is that it, when he died, he died of a drug overdose. So it's kind of hard to uh, marry those things up of him dying of drug overdose and his the stuff that he actually wrote about. So the stuff he's saying about being at one with your depression, um, he was bipolar. Um, but hadn't kind of publicly said that he was and I guess it's hard that he wasn't able to um, ultimately do all the things that he's kind of saying will help um, and but also I think it does it, it is that sometimes these things maybe aren't enough I mean I know that he was on medication for his bipolar as well um, but yeah it's kind of an interesting kind of thing I guess it's very sad what happened but um, and I suppose he he then kind of goes on to even him, his death sort of teaches is kind of teaching you that you can't I don't know it's it I find it, I find it a little bit uh, hard to get my head around the whole thing um, but the writing is great he's great um, and I think he was like such a an inspiration as well to you know a lot of people and um, if you're interested at all in kind of any of the like yoga um, meditation mindfulness or buddhism then you would like his work because i think he's one of the most kind of um intelligent kind of writers i've read on those subjects as well so there we go <laughs> that's that those are all the books i've read in the second half of august so i'd love to know if you've read any of them and what you thought of them um or if you have any thoughts on um michael stone's writing as well be great to hear so i hope you're having a great day i'll see you next week